I'm Edward Carlton from the DTG, as he said, I'm the Senior Conformance Engineer over there, and we've recently done a study on energy conformance on DAB radios, FM, hi-fi, and smart speakers. Uh, we did it for Lindsay Mack at the BBC uh, on 50 devices specifically. We also did another small study for Carsten in uh, Germany, which was on about 10 devices, but those are not included in this particular presentation as he's speaking later. Uh, so, going on to it, we've done our testing inside our GTEM cell, which is our one-directional anagoic chamber. We used a WT210 power meter, SFU for providing the signals, uh, amp probe sound meter for setting the noise level on the devices, and we kept an eye on the humidity and the temperature within the chamber throughout the period of testing using the thermodata. Uh, going on to some of the data here, so what we played was a one kilohertz sine wave throughout all the testing. So for DAB, we used one kilohertz. For FM, we used one kilohertz. Uh, for the smart devices, we also used one kilohertz uh, signal, which we got from YouTube via Sound Nation. And the thing's called Sound Nation, one kilohertz sine wave, if you want to uh, use that one. We set the volume level on all devices at 75 dBA. Uh, this is what we use in the specification for our DRUK tick mark testing, which we do on DAB radios. Uh, and that was obviously inside the GTEM cell. Uh, it's also a safe listening volume. I was stuck inside the GTEM cell for a period of about three weeks listening to a one kilohertz sine wave go beep. So it was good to, for my ears. We played it on channel 5A, uh, and as you can see, we have that radioactive measured, standby measured. How we measured it was over a period of five minutes, we would take interval data off the power meter and take an average over that period of five minutes, and that would be for the device. As you can see, we have not included any branding or models for any of the devices here. This is all anonymous. So don't worry. <laughs> so as you can see, on average, uh, depending on the size of the device, you've got different readings. On average, overall, you've got about a four watt active reading and an average of one point something watts on standby. The devices range from all the way to back to 2007. I have clipped it to 2012, so it's only the next 10 years. Oh, sorry, the past 10 years. Uh, just because some of the older devices perform quite badly. As you see, there's a couple of devices which uh, are drawing up to 10 watts plus on standby. These devices were battery-powered devices. Uh, for the battery devices, we did leave them on charge for about 48 hours in reality over the weekend, and then put them on again, expecting that they would then go back down to a base standby reading of ideally one watt if it's 2010, or after 2013, 0.5 watts. But unfortunately, they did not go back down. I suspect that's uh, battery degradation or something, so uh, don't worry too much about that. But as you can see, the vast majority of devices in the bottom half do meet that 0.5 watt requirement. Later on, we will go through the timeline so you can see uh, how they drew power over the course of that 10 years. Yeah, so we'll move on to the next bit. So here we're doing a little bit of a comparison between DAB active, FM active, Hi-Fi active, which is on DAB mode, uh, and smart device active as well as standby. Uh, all the devices tested are DAB slash DAB plus devices. So the DAB and FM active are just the switch between the modes of a DAB device. So not to contradict some of the uh, opinions earlier, which was purely uh, against DAB devices versus FM only devices. These are DAB and FM devices, all of them. So as you can see, the findings are about four watts active between both DAB and FM, the DAB FM devices, so the switching's not too much. Hi-Fi, obviously, a lot more, much bigger devices, much bigger speakers. <laughs> uh, smart devices, as you see, drawing a fair bit less while they're on. When we're going to standby, you see everything goes a little bit more comparable over there. Uh, the averages are drawn up by those battery-powered devices, but you'll see what kind of age they sit later on. So we have 
Davin's FM on those devices sit very similar. They are the same device, so that's not to be unexpected. Hi-Fi devices slightly more, smart speakers once again a bit more. When we go to the timeline, you'll see a better performance on DAV devices overall compared to smart speakers. So don't panic too much about that. Here we got energy efficiency over time. So we've got the active power consumption of essentially how this worked was I took all the devices, did an average over the year they existed in, and then put that in. So you're probably looking about four to five devices in each of those years. So 2012 active, six, uh, 2013 up to seven, and then you've seen it getting better along there. So you can probably see the age of those bad battery devices, <laughs> especially when you go look at the standby measurements, where it starts to average down quite nicely from 2012 through to 2022. Uh, where you can see that the average actually starts to meet that 0.5 requirement. These devices are not bought new. As we said, we deal with the DRUK tick mark testing, so these devices have been sat in our GTEM cell for many years. So age has degraded them, which has probably aff affected their performance overall. Uh, so you see the newer devices, they're all hitting that 0.5 requirement with a slight blip of about 0.7 in 2021. Uh, possibly caused by uh, some poor testing in the pandemic or something, but it's all come straight back to where it's supposed to be in 2022, and we expect that to continue into the future. Uh, as we mentioned on the Echo Dot testing, the speakers are drawing about uh, 2.625 watts, and the best one is standby. Uh, we've tested third generation, fourth generation uh, smart speakers from like, Amazon and Google and that kind of stuff. So they're not the really old stuff, they're the newer stuff. So that when we say standby on that, that means always listening <coughs> mode, obviously, because they don't actually go into a deep standby at all. They would just constantly listen to you. So DAB, sitting at about 0.5 watts now where it's supposed to be, uh, whereas your smart speakers are still acting as vampire devices, drawing nearly two watts out of them. So now let's compare it to the DTG's favorite topic, televisions. Uh, you've got a couple of televisions here also set to 75 dBA, all merged in together. Uh, factory default mode versus dynamic mode. So factory default mode is the mode that most people watch their televisions in. Dynamic mode is the mode that uh, you'll watch things like movies and all that kind of stuff, sports especially. You see you're looking at about 60, 80 watts overall drawed while listening to that in comparison to dabs. Four watts of listening. If you look on there, we include various different forms. SD content is the kind of thing you'll see if you were listening to radio on your TV. Uh, you've got Spotify there as well. And you see the power consumption when you're listening to radio or Spotify on your TV. It's vastly larger than if you were using a smart speaker or if you were using a DAP radio. So definitely more efficient of a listening platform. Uh, then we've got the one named product on the thing. Uh, we didn't test Sony, so I thought I'd have to mention it was an Xbox because Sony has my mobile number and I don't want a rude message from them later. <laughs> so same as the TVs again, same thing. Uh, this is connected to a TV. So you've got about 50 watts draw for Spotify. Uh, we didn't use a tuner on this, so we haven't run the radio off it, but Spotify is a good representation of what it's like when it's sound only. So you've got 50 watts. Your Xbox has to be connected to a stream. You saw it's between 60, 110 watts from a television, so you're going to have to combine that together, which means you can get anywhere from 110 to 140 watts being drawn listening to your radio or Spotify via a games console. So certainly, once again, even worse than if you're using a DAP device or a smart speaker to be listening to content. So overall, DAP's going in the right direction. It is still much more competitive versus uh, smart speakers as far as vampire, vampiric effects of power consumption go. Uh, as you know, in the current economic climate, uh, users are going to be very concerned about vampire devices in the household. So the more efficient the product is, the better. Current specification says it needs to be on a standby level at 0.5 watts for most domestic appliances, with some minor exceptions. Overall, I think we can probably get that a little bit lower, but DAB is definitely going in the right direction in comparison to the majority of other products. And its active consumption is 
far more efficient than any other means of listening to audio content.